So hi everyone. Uh, today we're gonna discuss about rethinking and improving related position encoding for vision transformer. So we are gonna cover the background and previous work, the four new relative position encoding methods, uh, implementation details and analysis of the relative position code position encoding and comparison in which classification and object detection uh, and, and uh, the conclusion. So for the background and previous work, we are first focusing on self-attention, absolute position encoding and relative position encoding, Shaw's RP, RP of relation transform Excel, uh, Hunang RP and RP of SASA and the Axel Deep Lab. So for the self, uh, let's uh, for the brief and like uh, recap of the self attention module. So the output of the self attention that is Z, Z, uh, ZI is uh, computed as the weighted sum of the input elements and W is the like weighted uh, parameter matrices. The alpha IJ is where the weighted coefficient, uh, it's computed using the softmax of EIJ and the EIJ is basically the self attention and the dot product attention of the key query and value matrices. And uh, D is represented as the dimensionality of the vectors. And the self attention is computed like uh, multiple times in parallel uh, using multi, uh, that what we call as like multi health self attention module. So the self attention has an inherent deficiency of uh, not capturing the positional information for the input tokens. That's why you use two type of positional encoding that is absolute and relative positional encoding. In case of the absolute positional encoding, uh, we encode like ap the absolute positions of all the tokens from one to the maximum length of the inputs. And then each positional encoding vectors is embedded with the tokens and passed it to the self-attention module. In case of positional and relative positional encoding, we calculate the absolute, dis uh, we calculate the relational like relative distance between two tokens uh, and then add the for reformulate the uh, self attention uh, like the, the attention uh, formula uh, the uh, the encoding vectors i this is the eij and as uh, represent as the eij is as you can recap you can see the eij uh, for ij is basically the softmax of applied on uh, eij and uh, pi is the relative position uh, relative position encoding vectors between the elements xi and xj so let's review some uh, previous position encoding methods and analyze the differences. Then we then we are gonna like later on the slides we're gonna propose four different new methods dedicated to vision transformer. So uh, this is the first one which called a Shaw's relational positional encoding. In case of Shaw's, the authors deemed that beyond a certain distance, the precise relative position information of input tokens are not uh, important. So they use this kind of like flip method, which calculates uh, maximum uh, like relative distance, uh, where k is the maximum relative distance between, and we calculate it's like from minus k to the minimum of k and uh, the input length. And as you can see in the graph, so this is the, the blue line represents the piecewise, uh, the piecewise function that we are gonna discuss on later on the slides. And the red one represents the clipping slides. So, this is uh, done to reduce the number of parameters and the formulas are modified accordingly. And this P is again the uh, trainable uh, weights and like in, within the domain of I minus J and K. So I minus J represents like this represents the clipped uh, portion from the entire weighted vectors. Uh, in case of uh, RP like in transformer Excel, so in the, the authors introduced an additional new uh, like bias terms, U and V for queries and used the sinusoidal formulation for position encoding. This SJ uh, is I minus G represent the sinusoidal formulation. Uh, the U or V are two learnable vectors and the sinusoidal encodings vectors are provides uh, the prior of the relative, relative position. And WR is the trainable matrix projecting S I minus J uh, into a location-based key vector. Uh, in this uh, relational uh, the relation position encoding method, uh, the graph has proposed a new method considering the interactions of queries, keys, and uh, values uh, simultaneously using the PIJ, where the PIJ again represents the positional encoding vector, share, which is shared among the key query and value vectors. Uh, in this method, the, so 
every uh, every other method that I have described previously is for like one dimensional, uh, which has been used in natural language processing. So this method is basically uh, specially designed for two D encodings, for two D images. So the authors uh, proposed a way so that each two D encoding vectors are divided in horizontal and vertical ways, and each horizontal and vertical encodings are then considered as a uh, like one dimensional encoding vectors. Uh, here uh, they calculate the P of delta X and P of delta Y, that is both horizontal and vertical way, and then concatenate them. Where the delta X and delta uh, Y represent the positional offset of X axis and Y axis of the image coordinate. And uh, each P of each of this P delta X and delta Y have dimensionality, half of the dimensionality of original vectors, that is the DZ. And when we concatenate each other, they become the equal to the original dimensionality, that is like D. So the and also like this method is used to uh, reduce the number of it, uh, learnable parameters. And in the Axial Deep Lab, the proposed a positional sensitive method introduced that like all QKV dependent positional bias into cell attention. The positional uh, sensitivity is applied axially, and that it propagates information also like height and with axis sequentially. And Shana, would uh, can you please take over from that? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So here I like to discuss about the new method proposed by the author. Here uh, we're discussing about uh, relative position encoding method. So first we want to discuss uh, two different modes. One is uh, bias mode and one is uh, context mode. And then after that, I'll, I will discuss about the piecewise index function, which is used to take place of the basic clipping method we just mentioned in Shell's work. And finally, we will discuss four different proposed method for the 2D relative position calculation. So first let's discuss about the two different modes, bias mode and contextual mode. So here, remember we, uh, for the, no normally for the attention uh, calculation, we want to uh, calculate this EIJ here. So first we want to consider this uh, bias or contextual in a general way. Here we want to add something to this EIJ equation. So here we just use this BIJ to represent something uh, uh, add to this EIJ. So when we consider the, it as just a bias, which means we just use a value, a learnable value, um, to um, to be used as a bias for difference uh, for a different distance between two pixels. So here we just will learn one value for one distance, but uh, this bias is very easy. So here we want to uh, consider contextual way, which means here we do not use only a value. We want to use a matrix for different Q, K, and V. So for Q and K, we want to just uh, multiply this uh, RIJ matrix to it. And for V, we want to add this RIJ matrix to it. In this paper, the author just tried to make sure we considered all different combinations for Q, K, and V with one of them, two of them, or all of them. So here we will check the uh, experiment results to see which is the most important, uh, which uh, can contribute most to the performance. Now I'd like to uh, discuss about this uh, piecewise index function. So here, uh, the idea is uh, we want to map a relative distance into an integer in a finite set. Previously, we used this uh, clipping method, which, has, uh, which we will use it to clip the input into only a distance of k, which means that the result will from minus k to k. But the thing here is it will not consider a very long range position. In this paper, the author just considered the positional information in a long range position should be preserved. 
uh, especially for all these uh, high resolution image processing. So here in this paper, the author just used this other function, this GX function. It's very hard for us to know what's the shape of this function here. So let's just still see that image we showed before. The red dotted line is uh, uh, the clipping method and the blue line is this uh, piece of white function. So for this uh, GX function, it actually distributes different levels of attention by relative distance. You can see we just uh, like separate all these different levels like a uh, stair here. And here, uh, besides all the things here for the output range, for this clipping function, the output range is from minus K to K. And for this GX, the output range is from minus beta to beta. So here in this image, we just want to compare these two. So here uh, in this image, we just use K equals to beta equals to five. And finally, I want to, I'd like to discuss about the 2D relative position calculation. Here in this paper, they propose four different methods. The first one is uh, Euclidean method, and the second one is quantization method. For the first one, it's uh, very easy to understand. First, they calculate the Euclidean distance. And then after that, they use that G function to get a value I, I, J. And then for different I, I, J, we will have different encoding for that. And this one is uh, based on the previous, uh, we usually mentioned mode, we could have bias or contextual. So this one could be just uh, value vectors or metrics based on different mode we use. Similar things will be uh, used for other method. And then for this quantization method, we still first uh, calculate the Euclidean method. But then after that, we still have another uh, quantization method. For this quantum method, uh, quantization method, they also simply use a very easy one. We map from X to X square. And then after that, we will still use the G function to calculate the value I, I, J and do the same thing as in Euclidean methods. The other two, one is cross method and another one is product method. For the cross method, actually the other one to consider X axis and Y axis separately. So here for the X offset, we use the GX to get this I X I J. And for the Y offset, we want to get that G, uh, use the G function to get a value of I Y I J. And then after that, for same I, X, I, J, uh, they will share the same encoding. And for the same I, Y, I, J, they will share the same encoding. So here, because we consider them separately, so here the final result is these two things combined together and guide the final relative position um, coding. For the product method, Actually, we don't want to consider these two separately. After we get use this, uh, these two equations, get the I, X, I, J, and I, Y, I, J, we want to make sure for different pairs, I, X, I, J, and I, Y, I, J, we will have different codings for them. So that's all the four proposed methods mentioned in this paper. And now my teammates Rishab will just discuss about the implementation details and the other experiment results. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So this paper has three sections of experiments. First, we're going to conduct various experiments to compare the different methods that Chen Yang described. And then we're gonna evaluate these methods on 
state of versus state of the art methods for the task of image classification and object detection. And then finally, we're going to produce a visualization of the relative position encoding. So these are the implementation details or how they set up their transformer model and all the parameters. So they use the data efficient transformer and they're using the same settings that that paper used. And by default, they're gonna add RPE to the key value, but you'll see in one experiment, they'll compare each different, the query, the, the value or the key or a combination. And then this is the, there's constants used for the piecewise function. So this is the ratio they're gonna set. It's one, two to eight. And as an explanation, alpha is the piecewise point. And so that's where they're gonna, you can see it in the equation and beta is the range. So the clip you saw it go from a certain range negative to negative. So this is gonna go from negative beta to positive beta. And gamma is the, it's gonna adjust the logarithmic curve, which you can see inside the natural log function. It's divided by gamma over alpha. And the last um, implementation addition they're doing is they're adding one to the number of buckets that's gonna be used as a classification token. So first we look at the difference in accuracy over the four different methods for calculating position. The first two Euclidean and quantization, they are undirected. As a reminder, Euclidean calculates Euclidean distance and maps it to an encoding. However, two positions can map to the same index. So that's where quantization comes in and it's gonna map to a unique integer to solve this issue. So they're similar, but quantization will be unique. And we can see that the results, oh, for the next section, we're gonna compare these two to the next two, which are directed, which is cross and product methods. So the cross and product, they're gonna be similar as well, similar to Euclidean quantization. So, but instead, they're directed, so cross method will calculate the, it's gonna calculate the encoding on the X and Y direction separately and then sum them. And similar to the Euclidean method, the cross method is going to encode multiple positions into the same index. But if, in this case, it'll be if either the X or the Y direction is identical. And the, and the product method is gonna be a similar solution. It's gonna handle this case of where two different positions map to the same index. And it's gonna do that by, in the piecewise function, it's going to do that for one piecewise function for X and Y directions combined, instead of doing two piecewise functions and then combining it later. So when we compare, the top, which is undirected, and the bottom, which is directed, we see that the accuracy of the directed is generally better in each case. And we are also looking at the difference between bias mode and contextual mode. So highlighted here is bias mode, and highlighted here is contextual mode. So we can see that the contextual mode has a higher accuracy. So the difference between bias and contextual is that in the bias mode, the RPE is independent of the query key or value embeddings and contextual will have some combination or at least one of those. It could have all three as well. And the next experiment we're going to look at is the shared versus unshared. So we're looking at whether attention is shared in the multi-head attention layer. 
and how that affects the performance and accuracy. In bias mode, sharing attention results in a lower accuracy from 80.54 to 80.05. And the number of parameters and the MAC is the multiply accumulate operation. So the count of those remains the same. And if we look at the contextual mode, sharing attention also results in a decline, but it's very slight, but it does reduce the number of parameters. So the authors decided that they would rather have the reduction in number of parameters than the increase in accuracy, which is very slight. The next experiment, we're gonna look at the two different functions, clip and piecewise. As a reminder, the clip function will convert any value outside of a specified range into the closest value inside that range. So we were talking about the beta goes from negative beta to beta. And so they devised the similar function, piecewise index function. And we can see for image classification, um, there is no difference in accuracy between clip and piecewise. The only difference is in bias mode, it goes from 80.1 to 80.0. And object detection, they couldn't use the data efficient transformer specified in their default settings. So they have to use a different model. They're using the deter transformer based model with a ResNet backbone. And the results, they show the contextual uses piecewise function. And the clip, you can see it's on top, and it results in a 0.4 higher average precision in object detection. So we can conclude that the piecewise function is better for our performance. The next experiment to conduct is on number of buckets. So the number of buckets is, is the number of mappings in the RPE. So if we look at the first from zero to 10, we see the greatest increase in accuracy. And then from 10 to 50, there's still a slight but consistent increase. And then the next, to get to the next increase from 50 buckets, you have to go all the way to 226 buckets. And they decided that it's not worth it. So they're going to stick to 50 buckets. And then we're gonna look at a component-wise analysis. So we're gonna look at the difference between, first we're looking at the difference between absolute position encoding and relative position. So on the left, you see it's a default model from the DEIT and that has the absolute position and it's learnable. And you can see the accuracy there. And so now this is, they're removing that absolute position. So the accuracy decreases 2.3%. And then we're gonna introduce their own relative position. So it's gonna be, they're gonna first test the query, the key and the value individually. And each one has an increase in accuracy. The value is less than the query and key. And then they're gonna do a combination. Since they thought that the query and key were better, they're gonna keep those in both and then um, differentiate if they use the value embedding or not. And using all three results and the best result. And now they also did the same experiment, but now they're gonna do both relative and absolute position. And they see that having both also increases the accuracy, but still the same result is all three embeddings, query, key, and value produce the highest accuracy. So now we're gonna look at the, they have two different implementations, an inefficient one and an efficient one. So they're inefficient is just like the basic algorithms or the basic equations that we already discussed but then they're gonna convert that to efficient where they're gonna first calculate all the Z values for all I 
and then they're going to from that z they're going to grab values for a specific ij so at the top you see it does each ij separately for this one it's going to do each i according to a t value and then it's going to grab from that z and for each ij so it doesn't have to for each t it can calculate it only has to do one calculation for each t instead of for each ij combination and from this they see that the efficient is has a increasing the resolution with the efficient implementation that doesn't result in any increase in the number of multiply accumulate or in the ratio of percentage I think I'm done there. Okay, so next one. Yes, we can. Uh, here, uh, in this paper, they compare the proposal method with the state of start method of image classification task. Um, the they select the data as the baseline and adopt, uh, adopt the proposal method um, in, uh, in the with the 550 bucket. And uh, here is the result of the comparison. Um, yeah, this is, this is the proposal method which earned the uh, relative relative position on the on the key. We can say the accuracy have a slice increase compared with the other other method. We can say have the point two five five improvement on the accuracy, and uh, this one is the another another method on the with the um, uh, is the is the RPE here here uh, under this one and under the RPE on the key we got the eighteen point nine accuracy and uh, this one the uh, improve the relative position on the on the query and the key and uh, we can say the accuracy got increased by one point one and uh, the last one they uh, improved all of the three metrics, the credit key and the value, we can say the, the improvement is got the most improvement. So they also make a conjecture that the ending the, uh, uh, ending the by ending proposal RPE, from both the credit and the value, we can get a further improvement in the accuracy. And uh, this is another comparison on the, on the data, data, B, data B model with the uh, with the RPE on the credit, you can see the um, compare the other, other method without the RPE. You got the one point one point one uh, uh, accuracy improvement. And also they make some uh, comparison on the object object detection. Here to verify the generation, this paper you value value the RPE method on the object data data set. Which is uh, Coco 2017. They, they use the uh, transform based detection model data as the baseline and uh, use the uh, following the same training setting except, uh, except injecting RPE into the, all the several contention model in the uh, encoder. And uh, here is the comparison, comparison result. And uh, this is used. The, Absolute position uh, on the patch 115. And uh, this one is used uh, the relative position, the relative position encoding on the 100, uh, patch 100. We can see we can go to the 1.3 improvement, uh, improvement uh, on AP. And uh, this is uh, the comparison on the patch 3000. We can see they go to the 1.7. Several improvement on AP. 
So we can say the absolute the position, 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 the letter position code is very include, very crucial on the data. And the absolute position code is better the, the relative position value in, in, in data. And uh, uh, we also do some experiment to explore, explore the underlying reason of the relative position encoding. The visualize the actual weight and uh, into the attention and into the attention by the RPE for different position. Here we can see on the on block zero, there's a main focus on the label, label patch in zero position. But as the as the local increase, this phenomena disappear. There's not much, not much focus on the labeling, labeling part on the block term. So um, they make some uh, assumption that after passing passing through multiple layer, this model have already captured enough local information. So um, in a later block, uh, this model may be more focused on capture the global, global information other than the local, local information. And uh, this, um, this is the conclusion. This paper review the existing relative potential encoding method, proposal for method dedicated to which uh, Transform the experiment and show that the uh, effectiveness of the method on both the classification and detection task. And uh, the method are easily adapted to other methods. This is uh, the, some part of a reference on this paper.